handcuffed to one wrist inside the 70 feet of rope. Oh, God. And then he was dragged west, seven tenths of a mile. I just saw the body and what's left of it. The M.E. said he's never seen anything like it. There's no end to it. What do you mean? I mean, this is number nine. Nine bizarre murders in the past two weeks. Every time my beeper goes off, my heart skips a beat. Are they connected? No, no connection at all. I mean, four have been men, five women, all different ages, Latino, white, black. And the M.O.s? All different. There's been a couple of shootings, different weapons, a hit and run, a drowning, an electrocution. I mean, it's, 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 it's like a full moon every night. And you're sure that the cases have absolutely nothing in common? Well, they have one thing in common, Monk. We can't solve them. I swear, there's something in the water. I saw the picture of you and your new boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. Hmm. I was thinking of voting for him. But uh, now I worry about his judgment. I mean, if he's going out with you, there's no telling what else he might do. Start a nuclear war or something. What time that you said that? No, don't. Just, I was joking. <laughs> then I'll tell him you were joking. No, don't, don't say that. Just, just don't say anything. Brought you some coffee. Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh, actually, it's for Sharona. Oh, thanks. Tell Kenny I say hi. I will. He stayed on his feet as long as he could. Then he fell, dragged away. I could hear him screaming and begging. It could have been me. It should have been me. What do you mean? I was wide open. Frankie had three cars in line. Wait, you were wide open? But the killer went to Mr. Pulaski's booth and waited in line? Yeah. Why would he do that unless... He was after that particular guy. So you didn't see the driver, and you didn't get a make of the car? I'm sorry. It might have been a Chrysler. I'm not sure. Captain, what's this? The killer paid his toll with that. That's supposed to be at the lab. Arlene Carney? Yes? How are you, Arlene? What is that? So she goes inside, and about a minute later, a, a man steps up. Can you describe him? I couldn't really see his face. He was holding a handkerchief over his mouth like he had a cold. He bought a ticket for the same movie. And, and I asked him if he wanted the combo special, which is a large popcorn and a medium drink, a $9 value and only $7.50. He, he said no. And then he went inside and killed her, which I had no idea he was planning to do. And he paid you with this? Yes, sir. Great, thanks a lot. You need to go downtown and talk to a sketch artist. Jerry, Officer Johnson will give you a ride. You've got a serial killer on your hands. Monk, the woman was strangled. She didn't know any of the other victims. I am not crying wolf until I am 100% sure. This is definitely the same man that killed Frank Pulaski at the toll booth. A lot of people pay with $10 bills. It's brand new. There are a lot of brand new 10s out there right now. Serial numbers are sequential. What, you remember them? Well, I got a pretty good look at it. The bill at the toll booth. Ended with 6092B. This is 6093B. A serial killer. It's not moving. Yeah, yeah, it's moving. It's moving. Oh no. God, oh no! Look out behind you! Look out, Henry Small! Henry Small! Adrian! What are you doing? I don't know. Number 11, damn it. All right, nobody's going home. I want to know how many of our victims knew Mr. Henry Smalls. We're going to revisit every crime scene, every house. We huddle back here at 0900. Go. Go!
In a few minutes, Deputy Mayor Kenny Shale will be making his brief statement regarding the recent series of homicides. Monkey, too late. They've already started. They're about to name Wallace Cassidy as the primary suspect. No, no, they're making a mistake, Lieutenant. There's something else going on here. Stuart and Lisa Babcock are involved in all of this. I know it. The homeowners where the guy fell off the roof. How? We're still working on it. Well, can you prove it? Not yet. What? what what's this? The coroner found it. It's a sleeve. Or, a part of it. Henry Smalls, juror number 12, he was clutching it when he died. He must have ripped it off the killer. Monk, forget it. It's a dead end. It's already gone through the lab. It's untraceable. There'll be time for a Q&A later. But remember, officially, this is still an open case. So we're not going to be able to get into any Cut. specifics. Cut. What do you got? What's up? I, I think I know what's been going on here. It wasn't juror number 12. It was Stuart and Lisa Babcock. Wait, the couple that's being sued. Are you sure? Do you mean, am I certain? Yeah, yes, that's what I mean by are you sure. Not yet. I, I, I need an hour, just one hour, and then we'll know. Is there a problem? Captain, are we about ready? Hang on just a second. Kenny Monk needs an hour. I'm going to give it to him. What about the press? The press can wait. That's what they get paid for. Well, I can't. Now, if we don't start now, we're not going to make the 6 o'clock news, all right? Look, I'm going to go ahead with or without you, Captain. It's called leadership. No, no, Kenny. It's called grandstanding. Let's go. Kenny. 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 Oh, hey, sweetie. I'm glad you stayed. Watch this. A star is born. No, no, wait, Kenny, Kenny. Listen to me. You're making a big mistake. This is the kind of mistake that that people won't forget. Well, Sharona, sweetheart, you don't understand how this game is played. You said you trusted me. Well, I trusted you to pick out my tie, babe. Not with the big stuff. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming. I'd like you all to know that we've made a significant breakthrough in this case. Mr. and Mrs. Babcock, San Francisco PD. I'm Captain Stottlemyer. Were you folks going somewhere? We're just getting away for the weekend. Yes, we have a house at the beach. Well, I'm glad we caught you. I trust you with my ties. Where the hell does he get off with it? I don't know. Are those passports in your handbag, Mrs. Babcock? You're not leaving for the weekend, are you? You're leaving for good. Because you heard they just arrested Wallace Cassidy. Who? Fixes a few parking tickets and you think you can talk to me that way? Nobody talks. Nobody. Wallace Cassidy. Stupid man. He was on the jury when you were Nobody. being sued six years ago. What are you talking about? Why would we care about somebody on a jury? That Maybe because you knew he was going to confess. Not for murder. For blackmail. Juror number 12 was blackmailing you. He knew that you had murdered your first wife. After Ian Agnew fell off your roof six years ago and sued you for negligence, the jury was brought here to visit the scene of the accident. One of them, Wallace Cassidy, wandered off. Most likely he was looking for something to steal. Mr. Cassidy had a gambling problem. He was always in debt. Oh, God, I can't believe I went out with him. He's not even my type. I felt sorry for that stupid weasel. Sharuna? What? We're working here. Mr. Cassidy never did find anything to steal. He found something a lot more valuable. It was the first Mrs. Babcock. He didn't leave without taking a picture and one of her fingers. We have that picture, and we have the finger. It won't be hard to prove who it belongs to. He sent you an anonymous note demanding money. You knew it was from one of the jurors, but you didn't know which one. At the time, you didn't really care. Cassidy was small time, and he wasn't asking for much. So you paid him, and you thought that was the end of it. But it didn't end there. Cassidy kept coming back for more. So you decided to kill the blackmailer. But since you didn't know which of the 12 jurors it was, they all had to go, one at a time. Bastard! Not you. Sharona, murderers, OK? Relax, honey. They can't prove a thing. If they could, they would have arrested us as soon as they got here. That's true. I couldn't prove a thing until I found this. Your shirt sleeve was torn off when you attacked juror number 11.
Can you prove that's my shirt? No, sir, I can't. But I know someone who can. As soon as I saw this, I had a strange feeling that the killer and I might have something in common. We both use the same dry cleaner. Mr. Monk, why you bring me here? I gotta close my shop, I'm losing money. You're just my worst customer. Longest car ride of my life. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ling, but this is very important. Do you recognize this? Yeah. Yeah, I know this shirt. I clean this shirt. Silk, beautiful shirt, hanger, no starch. What'd you do to this shirt? Mrs. Ling, there must be a thousand shirts like this in the world. How do you know you cleaned this particular one? You know how? The button, it fall off. I sewed it back on. The thread is parallel, not crisscross. No one else sews a button on like this. I told you, Mr. Monk, that's my style. He's always complaining about the button. Hey, Mr. Babcock, when I fix this shirt for you, you don't complain, right? Because you're a good customer. Mrs. Ling, are you certain that this shirt belongs to Mr. Babcock? I'm sure he's a good customer. You come back any time, Mr. Babcock. Ma'am, you just killed 11 people. 12. Let's not forget about the first Mrs. Babcock, who I'll bet is buried under that new porch. Well, he's still a good customer. Not crazy like that Mr. Monk over there. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. One seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's